Many people make the mistake that I'm gonna be going through this video, but before getting into that mistake, why do people do this mistake? Most people want success now, in this moment. They don't want to wait 50 years to get success. Now, if you're at that age that you probably don't have 50 years to live, I get that. But many of you who are watching this have at least 10 years left, and most people who are watching this you have 20 to 70 years left at least. Human longevity is something that I'm extremely passionate and fascinated about, especially as the science is so rapidly developing and everything is compounding. It could seriously be that you live still for another 100 years or more. Some experts believe that the first human has born who will never die. And there are quite many experts who think that we already have the capability to stay alive forever because we can already reverse aging with oxygen uh, therapy. Plus many other things that have been emerging in the last few years. But of course it's not guaranteed, but you probably have still some time here on Earth. Today I wanted to make this video about a topic that I feel most people do not really talk about that much and it is crucial. Planning and designing systems for a lifetime. Today I'll guide you through how you can make sure your systems are bulletproof and they will last no matter what happens. And why it is important that they are actually bulletproof. I'll go through three steps. But before we get into today's video, can I ask you a favor? I know that over 90% of you who are watching this video right now are not subscribed to my channel for a reason or another. So I'm gonna make you promise if you subscribe to this channel right now, I'm going to do everything in my power to make these videos just more and more valuable for you. Okay, do we have a deal? Have you subscribed? Hopefully you have. Okay, let's get to the video. 1. Why this can be the thing that brings you to success. Harrison Ford is one of my favorite actors of all time. He starred in Star Wars and Indiana Jones and many other movies, just to name a couple there. But how he became successful is a beautiful story, but most people do not talk about it or know about it. Many people think that people like him or Samuel Jackson or Charles Darwin got success just like that, like very early on. But that was not the case. Samuel Jackson got success when he was 46 and when he started in Pulp Fiction. Charles Darwin published on the origin of the species at 50 years old. Ford had to wait until his mid-30s to see success, but how he persevered is so cool and interesting. Overnight success. Ford wanted to be an actor and he knew this early on, but becoming an actor isn't of course easy nor it is easy to achieve any other dream for that matter. We all see those overnight successes, don't we? But some of us are actually intelligent enough <laughs> to see and know that this didn't actually happen overnight, that the people who have got overnight success have been working for an extremely long period of time before they have got the success. Actions stack up a little by little by compounding. The same way if you would invest in an index fund, your money would compound and compound over time and then one day you see this huge change. Sure, some people reach success in their 20s and <laughs> heck in, the, in their 10s, but this is not the case for most people and there can be even disadvantages to getting success at that young age. Why you may ask? Because they got success much early on so they didn't need to persist at it for such a long period of time, which means that that has made them more fragile. So if a storm comes, because there's gonna be many storms during your lifetime, then they are the most likely ones to sink and not anymore have the success that they previously had. The only way to see success is to keep going and not give up. But sometimes this is very hard. What makes it even harder? If you haven't designed your plan and systems for a lifetime. Ford noticed that he couldn't sustain his family, his then wife and two kids by acting, but he knew that one day maybe he could. He saw a ton of other youngsters hopping to Hollywood at their 20s and hoping to make it and hoping to land a massive gig immediately. But Ford knew something that most people didn't know or want to acknowledge, to play it long term. When he noticed that he couldn't support his family with acting, he became a carpenter. <laughs> yes, a carpenter. Then he did not need to take any gigs he didn't want. He could wait to land those jobs that he actually liked. Through carpentry, I fed my family and began to pick and choose from the among the roles offered. I could afford to hold out until something better came along, but I never gave up my ambition to be an actor. I was frustrated, but never felt defeated by my frustration. Harrison Ford. While working for Universal Pictures, Ford met his biggest cheerleader, Fred Roos. 
and he was fascinated by Ford's talent and started to recommend him everywhere to everyone. Despite this, Ford got only three to four films in his eight years he was working as a carpenter. But Ford wasn't just any other carpenter, he was working with famous celebrities from jazz stars to authors to people working at the movies. Rules being one of them. This was his biggest advantage in my eyes. One, he got to sustain his dream by being a carpenter. And two, he got to know people in the film industry better as they were his clients. 1973 came around. Forge breakthrough. He landed American Graffiti by George Lucas. Try to guess who was the casting director of that film. Yes. Rules. The film was a massive success, but that didn't actually change Ford's position that much. He still continued to work as a carpenter, but he had impressed George Lucas and Francis Ford Coppola who produced the movie. But then his real breakthrough came when he won the audition for Star Wars and he got offered a role and Ford was happy. This was not Han Solo, but Rules kept insisting that Ford would be Han Solo. And then of course he ended up getting it later on. But how did Ford actually get the role of Han Solo? Like what made the difference? He got it with his humor. <laughs> yes, believe it or not, you might know Ford for his humor so you might see and understand where this is coming from. Anyway, he got it with his humor. And it wasn't the acting skills, although he was extremely talented, according to Lucas. Lucas had just asked Ford a simple question at the audition. You know, this is about spaceships, flying, things like that. You know how to fly? Ford fast replied, fly? Yeah. Land? No. Lucas said that this was the moment that he landed the role. In 1977, Star Wars The New Hope was released and there was no turning back. Ford still didn't really pocket much money. He got 10 grand for the entire role, but as he had impressed Lucas, whilst working at the American Graffiti and now Star Wars, then they went on and made Indiana Jones, which then got Ford so much success. Today when I'm making this video, Ford is still a massive star and he just made his last Indiana Jones this past summer. Now you know how Ford got success and maybe you already got some nuggets from there that you can take to your own life, but let's dive deeper. How can you implement these lessons to your life? 2. Importance of bulletproof systems. Make your systems last a lifetime. Ask yourself, how can I sustain chasing my dreams for 50 plus years? That's how you get the most important answer. Most people do not stay in the game for that long, which I believe to be the factor why most people do not see success. I'm gonna take the NFT space as an example here. In 2021 there was a gold rush. Everybody wanted to make NFTs, buy NFTs to make money after people had sold his NFT for 69 million USD. Every artist got interested, like, okay, what is this NFT thing? And then some ended up hopping in and some not. Those who did most likely made some sales, maybe not a ton, but at least some sales. I saw a ton of people making sales, especially in August 2021 and September 2021, when the hype for the collections was like through the roof. Some sold out very fast, if not instantly, and then some didn't really sell out, but Still, people made some sales for some <laughs> serious and big money. Many thought, now I can just drop everything and I can become a full Web3 NFT artist. But this was, of course, not the case for the long term. Sure, August and September, and I would still add October to that, were absolutely amazing. Amazing time, good old times. Of course, every artist loves seeing their art resonate with the audience, and that actually some people want to invest a lot of money into their art. I released my first collection in October 2021 called The Unexpected Journey and it had 12 pieces of art and it sold out in 3 weeks. I was one of the ones who thought, okay, now I can become a full-time artist and now I can drop everything and just be, keep doing this thing before Ethereum started dropping like crazy and it actually started dropping immediately on the day when I sold out my collection. And it kept dropping. And in January 2022 it got even worse and there was no better times inside. Many dreams got shattered, many lost a ton of money and yeah, many people got depressed over that time. It was very difficult 2022 overall as a whole year. There were still some sales happening not anywhere close to the hype of August and September time but still some sales and some people were able to reach their all-time high price sales in in 2022. And then 2023 came around. This year's been tough when I'm being very honest and that word does not give it justice on what it's been for many artists. 
including me. From my side, I can say I have not sold a single one-on-one -on -one artwork the entire year. And that's been kind of difficult, but then my prices are also higher than, than most people. So it's also much harder for me to make sales in this current market. I have sold some larger edition works though, and many artists are doing this as well to sustain and to stay in the game for a longer time. But when I go back to my 2021 tweets, not many are anymore around. Most have left and it's sad. But why most have left? Well, I guess some people got their money and they didn't see a future in NFTs. Some realized that NFTs are not the thing that they want to invest their time into in the first place. Then others couldn't sustain themselves by trying to get sales in the Web3 space. Maybe they had expected they could make more, but now then they were in financial pressure to go and do something else. Their plan wasn't made to last a lifetime. It was made to last for a few months. Now looking at the most artists still at it, trying to get successful, are at a 9 to 5 job, it helps them to stay in the game for long enough, or two, make some addition sales, which helps them to sustain themselves a bit better. Most aren't making crazy one-on-one -on -one sales. Sure, there's been some breakthrough artists, but why this has been is because they have been able to stay in the game for long enough. Think about all the scenarios. What if you make zero sales in three months? What if you accidentally break your camera and can't afford a new one? What if a partner or a kid of yours gets ill for a long time and you need to look after them? How can you sustain yourself to stay in the game for long enough and stay consistent? You must have a bulletproof system. That's how you have a chance at reaching your dreams. You never know how long it will take you to reach your dreams or if you're going to reach your dreams in the first place. But what are some evergreen skills that you can master while waiting and working hard towards making your dreams happen? Three evergreen skills. What are some evergreen skills that you can develop and never regret learning? Writing, marketing, sales, video, design, content creation, public speaking and people skills. You can't go wrong with any of these skills. In the best case scenario, you would take many of these and combine them together because you're going to need many of these skills to get successful. For example, if you would want to be a successful artist, you need to be able to write about your art, be able to market your art, be able to sell your art, be able to design your art or marketing content, be able to communicate with people about your art and make them convinced it's worth investing in. You need to stack skills to get where you want. You just can't go and master one skill like many advice and call it a day. Those who combine skills are going to stand out and they are most likely going to see the success that they want. More examples, for example, photographers Kath Simard and Ruben Wu. Simard has mastered art, marketing, sales, editing softwares, and knows a ton about hiking and outdoors to get the shots that she wants to make. Wu has mastered art, marketing, sales, editing softwares, sound design, and knows a ton about outdoors because he must know because he is shooting <laughs> outdoors. These are just two examples, but can you spot the patterns? I'm learning new skills all the time. I have a big vision, for example, for my project called Tales of the North, but the thing is that I don't have the skills to make it happen yet, and I don't have the resources to make it happen either. So the only way to get the resources and the skills is to actually go and learn new skills and invest my time and money into those things. The more valuable skills you have, the more the society will reward you financially. And this is why actually many artists live poor. It's because most people do not value owning art that much. It said it takes around 10 years to master a skill. Think about how many skills you can master in your lifetime. You might need to wait a long, long time to achieve your dreams. So why not go and learn new skills? Because this thing is going to make you stand out when you combine the skills and you're going to get fast to the destination that you want when you are better at certain skills. If you had to choose one skill to master, what should it be? People skills. People skills are the most important evergreen skill. And why is this? Because everything Everything is communication. Marketing, you communicate with others. Sales, you communicate with others. Video, you communicate with others. People skills give opportunities that most do not get. Think back to Ford. He didn't get his breakthrough because of his acting skills necessarily, although he was great. But he got the breakthrough because of his humor. People skills made the difference. And 99.9% .9 of people have not mastered people skills, which boggles my mind. And no, being extroverted is not the same thing as mastering people's skills. Many extroverts can still be terrible at 
human interactions and do a ton of stuff wrong. I want you to get the most opportunities possible and that's why I'm hosting a live training on people skills this month if you haven't already heard about it. The enrollments are not open forever so make sure to enroll right now or then if you're watching this much later on make sure to go and sign up for the waitlist. Conclusion. Patience plus skill equals to success. If you quit along the way you have a 0% chance of being successful. If you suck and aren't good enough, you have zero percent chance to be successful. You need a combination of both. Design your plan that you can stay in the game for a lifetime. And that's how you reach the places that most people do not get to. Thank you for watching today's video. I've been waiting that I can use Harrison Ford as a case study because I just love his work and his story. This was so much fun to make. Make sure to give this video a like if you enjoyed it as well. Again, there's the link for Social Mastery down below in the description if you want to check it out. Until next time, my friends. Bye.